It's a 100% awa tree fruit? 100% awa tree fruit, 100% from one vineyard. That's really important. This is the way the fruit comes into the tank. So it's like climbing a rock without any ropes attached. So no blending, minimal invasion, just runoff juice, first bit of the juice until the press starts to build up a little bit, straight into one tank, and that's where it sits. So no okay. blending, no nothing. That's, it's basically, we, I taste the fruit outside in the vineyard, I, I monitor it, and it's one of the last batches that we pick. The funny thing is about, especially this one vineyard, and that's something that I, I rarely see, and if I see it, I, uh, this is like a big eureka moment, is you get that little bit of a, a lardy sensation on the, on the back of, of the grapes. So once that starts happening, mm -hmm. it's like, wow, you've got, you've got that vintage where you, can, where you can actually make that wine. And that's what is actually happening here too. So you, get, you still get that little bit of a lardy uh, mm -hmm. smokiness. There's, it's a high impact bouquet. Mm -hmm. It screams Awa Tree Valley and mm -hmm. the volume of some of the characters in this wine are, are, are turned up. But it pushes this wine into um, quite a different, almost a different category of Sauvignon Blanc because this really has this um, savory, really stony, high impact herbaceousness to it. But the signature is Awa Tree. Yep. So, you know, you're picking up a glass of this, you're going to go, our tree valley. If, if you use gooseberry as a character to describe Sauvignon Blanc, mm. this is fresh picked gooseberry. <laughs> it's aged, <laughs> it's cooked, and it's poached as well. So it's giving you every version of gooseberry that you can think of. Um, but you're also smelling like you would be biting into crushed rock as well. There's, there's knowing what the our tree um, valley looks like. I, I totally fell in love with this with this one vineyard. And it's, um, it's like really our, our treasure chest. Yeah, yeah. Now we're moving into the main course. Yep. You've been welcomed into the house and that's, <laughs> that's the first wine. Moving into the next room with the I second wine and now we're heading to I the like dinner that table. This is your main course. <laughs> because it's fuller, richer, rounder and it's way more giving on the palate than the nose suggests. Mm, mm, mm. There's a, a signature in the texture of this wine that was in the previous in the reserve and that was that there's a there's a creaminess and a roundness mm -hmm. in the center of that mm -hmm. wine. Because Sauvignon Blancs have these, like, these, can have this icy cold steeliness mm -hmm. about them and, and, and it miss, mm -hmm. misses something in the middle. Mm -hmm. What this has in the middle is that, that creamy richness that's there. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a real positive. You know at the end of some old pop songs that instead of fading out into, you know, how they just sort of fade out and you go, you know, this one has this, <laughs> shrill at the end, I, I don't you know, Andrew Lloyd Webber would, would do it, and it would just be, it would end, but you'd know that it was the now it's, end. Now it's over. Now, it, now it's over. <laughs> and, and by ending it in that way, it leaves that lasting impression. Mm, 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 so the flavor actually continues really, really long for mm, mm, mm.